It's now 9 a.m. Tuesday, April the 14th, 2020. I'd like to welcome everybody, everyone to our special call meeting this morning, the Swanee County Board of County Commissioners. At this time, I've asked Commissioner Fleming to do our invocation and our pledge. If everyone please stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, bestowed upon us. We thank you for these times. Father, we thank you for how you brought us, blessed us, and kept us. Father, we pray that you bless those that are in turmoil. Look over our county, our country. Bless our nation as a whole. For we need you and we can't get along without you. We pray that you strengthen us where we're weak and build us up, Father, where we're torn down. We can't realize that we can't make it without you. We can't do nothing without your spirit. We pray, God, for all the blessings. Look on our county. Look on our commissioners. Look on our department heads. Those that are making decisions, our attorneys. Father, I know that you're able to make a way out of nowhere. Bless those that are in distress, those that are torn up, ones that's broken down in storms. Father, make a way out of nowhere. Father, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Before we get started this morning, I'd just like to say on behalf of the board that uh, our thoughts and prayers go out with everyone that was affected yesterday by the storm. So we had a tornado. It, uh, there's some homes that's, and businesses that's been devastated. And uh, we just want each of you to know that our thoughts and prayers are with you at this time. First order of business this morning is the minutes, approval of the minutes from the April 2nd, 2020, and April 7th, 2020. Do I have any questions or comments, or do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Richardson, second by Commissioner Gamble. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Moving right along. Consent agenda, at items two through six. Do I have any questions or comments, or do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Gamble, is that right? Yes, sir. We've got a motion to approve by Commissioner Gamble, second by Commissioner Fleming. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number seven, uh, general business discussion. Anything from the board on COVID-19? Mr. Harris, do you have anything you'd like to start us off with this morning? I'm going to make it brief. Um, the Association of Counties and some of you may have seen this already is asking for a change in the distribution of federal funding related to COVID-19. Uh, as you may know, counties with populations greater than 500,000 are getting uh, direct deposits from the federal government to assist. The smaller counties are not getting that direct deposit. So this is an appeal by the Florida Association of Counties. They wrote letters and sending them out to all of the senators and the representatives. Uh, they've asked us to make our own appeals to House members and to Senators as well to uh, change that formula it's otherwise being distributed through CDBG, which you've heard me say many times is the most complex program that there is for receiving funding. But if you have an opportunity, reach out to uh, Senators and Representatives uh, because these letters have already gone out on our behalf anyway from the Association of Counties. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alden, you want to give us an update this morning? Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you very much. I apologize for being a little late. We were busy crunching numbers. Um, uh, this morning's data came out uh, shortly after 8 o'clock. There are 21,362 cases in the state of Florida. Of those are 503 deaths. 50% of the confirmed cases are males, 49% are females, 1% is unknown, meaning that the data that was entered has had not been verified or was entered incorrectly. Uh, it is interesting to point out that the age group from 45 to 64 years of age continued to lead the state at 37% of the cases. 
followed by the age group of 25 to 44, which is 30 percent. Uh, the elderly, 65 and up, are 25 percent of the cases. There are only 90 cases in children between the ages of 0 to 4, and 168 cases in children between the ages of 5 and 14. Uh, Seven percent of the state's cases are now in individuals between the ages of 15 and 24 with 1,497. We will be announcing this morning for Swanee County that our case count is now up to 75, which is seven more cases than yesterday. And the reason being, over the weekend we did not have but one announcement of one new case. Our numbers change based upon when it is entered into the state's database. And once it hits the state's database and is a confirmed case, then we will report that. So over the weekend, we didn't have many, and we suspected that we would have an increase. I talked to Randy Saturday and Sunday, and the days were running together, Randy, but, uh, and, to, and told him that, you know, we know that we've got test results out there pending. It depends on when the state lab can test them as, and how quickly they can get that reported. But of the seven new cases this morning, five are connected to an existing case and two are connected to a case but not to any facility. They are a husband and wife and um, one is hospitalized, the other is not. Also, it saddens me to report that we will be announcing three deaths connected to Swanee County. Uh, one is a 77 female, the other is a 74 male, and a 74 male. All were hospitalized and all had comorbidities, which means they had very serious underlying medical conditions. These three deaths are connected to an existing case. Some of the larger counties that are having the highest number of cases are, are Dade County with 7,550, Broward County with 3,247, Palm Beach County with 1,727, Orange County with 1,031, Duval 716, Alachua 192, Clay County 167, Clay County has a nursing home facility with a substantial number of cases that have tested positive. Leon County with 151, Marion County with 102, and then closer to home, Columbia County is reporting 28, Baker County 17, and Madison County 14. This is going to be a critical week for us. And I think that, as I've told my staff, it's going to be a telltale week based upon the number of folks that we are screening at the health department, based upon the number of folks that are being screened in doctor's offices. Now, y'all, I'm terrified a lot, and if I go to running, I'll be back when it's over with. Uh, but um, if we continue to screen and test in a confined facility that already has an outbreak, you will continue to get positive test results because it's in, it's in that facility. The more you test, the more confirmed positive cases that you are going to get. I do think if we continue to see a decrease in the number of folks that are being swapped, that are being tested, that's a positive sign for our community. We still encourage folks, if you are a close contact, if you are positive, please stay home. Please stay home. Uh, we are monitoring those folks. We are calling uh, every other day to check on them, to see how they're doing, to see if their conditions have changed, and so forth. But we want you to stay home. We work with the Sheriff's Department, and if necessary, we will alert them that we have an issue that we would like for them to help us address. And if that means the Sheriff's Department calling you and asking how come you're not staying home, if that means the health department calling you and asking why you're not staying home, we will do so. It's very important that people that are a close contact, that is, they have been in less than six feet for more than 15 minutes with somebody that's a positive case, we need you to self-isolate and monitor your symptoms to make sure that you do not become positive. If your symptoms change, 
and you are showing symptoms, then we want to get you tested to confirm that yes, you do have uh, COVID-19. So uh, we can't emphasize that enough. Continue to practice the social distancing. I was in the grocery store last night and I followed the arrows and I made sure I stayed away from everybody. Uh, stay home. Do not travel unless you absolutely have to or if it's a necessity. Uh, so we, you know, wash your hands frequently. Make sure you're practicing proper sanitizing. Those are things that we strongly encourage. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions from the board at this time? Uh, one question I've got is uh, when we're looking at the numbers, you're, I know you're looking at more data than we are, uh, but from a statewide, we seem to be going down on the number of cases added every day. Um, how far behind the state would you say that we are, or are we pretty much in line with the state of Florida? I'm not sure I understand what you mean behind the state. Uh, well, you know, the state kind of got in, uh, got into the COVID-19 numbers a little earlier because of the internet, I think, I guess, because of the larger cities and populations and airports and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, we didn't have our first case for a couple weeks after that. So when we look at the daily additions, and uh, I think that's one of the things that the president talks about quite a bit, is, is how many additional uh, people are, are diagnosed daily uh, throughout this thing. We see the state of Florida trending downward on those numbers. Um, I, I know we had our, at least so far, our peak at 13. I think it's the biggest number that we had all day. Well, that was the largest number in one day. But again, that's tied back to the lab, how quickly the lab can process and get the results out. And a lot of times over the weekend, they're, they're still testing and they're still uh, you know, receiving samples, but it depends on how many people are at the lab, how many people are, are running the labs. So that number, I always anticipate, if I don't see many numbers on the weekend, I know that Monday or Tuesday, we'll have a handful. So it's hard to say that, yeah, that we know, you know, if, if we've got some that we know have been sent in and are pending, we can sort of gauge you know, what we expect to come back. And, and so. so the question I had to you was more directed toward the numbers that we don't see, and those are your daily swabs and stuff like that that you had mentioned. So are we seeing a trend we're downward uh, at this point, or are we expecting it? The next that, that's why I made, made my comments, Commissioner. This is going to be a telltale week for us. If we continue to see a decline in the number of folks that are being swapped, I know that yesterday the number that we swapped at the health department was significantly less than the week before. Um, so, and, and I know that we're not seeing as much activity from the local doctor's offices either. So, I, I don't want to jinx anything. But I'm, I'm optimistic that this week is going to give us some strong guidance on where we're at in, in, in Swanee County in the total scheme of, of COVID-19. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Let me try to speak to that as well. One thing that uh, I did because you asked me to was I didn't bring that schedule today. <laughs> uh, in fact, you asked me to burn it, I believe, was, was the way that you explained that to me. Um, I still have a copy of it though, and I've been monitoring what's been going on. Um, I'm encouraged in that we are not continuing to double every two days the way that we were. And that, I can only say, has slowed down the last four or five days. Um, when I spoke to Mr. Waldron last couple of days, I said, okay, now what I want to do is make a distinction between those cases that are related that larger number and the cases that are out here in the general population that are occurring those are the cases that concern me the most right now because they started later and I, I really I'm hoping that we don't see those numbers start doubling every two days so I'm monitoring that with Mr. Waldron and we're going to keep watching that closely one thing that really concerns me and should concern all of these small rural counties around us is that we have large numbers of people that drive back and forth from one county to another every day to work. Um, even in the uh, smaller number of businesses today in these essential 
businesses that have still been in operation. You've got people coming in and out from any number of counties around us, and a lot of our citizens are driving into other locations to work as well. So you look at some of these uh, smaller counties around us that are only now starting to see cases. Um, my concern is that perhaps a lot of those communities are only now starting to take this serious because those cases are only now beginning to show up. So I, I think the potential exists that we're going to have some effects from those surrounding counties. But I'm going to be monitoring those numbers from the general population very closely as we go forward to see if those numbers are doubling every two days like the others were that were associated with the facility that were easier to track. And I can speak to that. Of our total cases, only 12 are not connected to an existing case. Uh, we do know for a fact that uh, two individuals, one worked out of county, worked with a co-worker that was positive. This individual became positive and now their spouse is positive. So, so Mr. Harris is absolutely correct. We are monitoring those that are not connected. We anticipate they'll be more connected. What we want to make sure of is monitor those that are not connected back to a case because we, we do have a transient workforce that traveled back and forth. I know Hamilton County has two cases. Uh, Lafayette still only has one case. That case is connected to an existing case in Swanee County, so we want to monitor that as well. And uh, I'll, I'll continue to provide Mr. Harris those numbers. That we can. He's right, we don't want to see a doubling there. We want to, we want to keep that contained. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, yes, I do. Mr. Honey, how do I know the HIPAA law? I know about the HIPAA law, and, but how do you know who have is a carrier and you're around that individual? And with the HIPAA law protecting them, you know, protecting the people, how do you know the individual have it? I, you know, I, I was around to uh, a couple of stores and I was just monitoring how they were doing. They were wiping their the gas pump down and I went on the inside and had this six foot. Went to a couple more stores out in the rural area and they were doing the same thing. They had their masks, gloves, etc. But if you pass an individual and they say, now nah, it's carried by shoes, you know, you, walk and pick it up, I don't know. Or some of it in the air. Uh, how do you know if an individual have it and you carry it back to your home, back to your home? Well, well, first and foremost, there's something called personal responsibility. If you are sick, you need to stay home. If you are positive, you need to stay home. If you are a close contact to an individual, you need to stay home. Casual contact, just passing somebody is not going to be an element of transference of, of this virus. Uh, there are a lot of folks that are asymptomatic that don't, that have not tested but might be carrying it. We just don't know. That's the uncertainty. But at any time someone begins to have symptoms, they need to take some personal responsibility, stay home, contact their medical provider, and ask the questions to them to help get a diagnosis on how they should be treated or what they should do. So just, just passing me in, in, in the, the hallway, no. But if I'm in direct contact with you less than six feet for more than 15 minutes, then that's a higher percentage of potential transmission if you have it. I I'm glad you said that because some of these people are not, are not reporting some of the stuff that, that's carried. Well, and, and that's the other issue that we battle too. If you have it, if you're sick, stay home. There's, you know, again, personal responsibility that we all have to look out for the welfare of our fellow man. We have got to, to monitor our own actions. Think, you know, as we said before, be cautious, um, use common sense, but, but we have an obligation to, to take care of ourselves, but also to make sure that I don't get someone else sick. You know, I have not gone to events or been around family or friends by choice. Although I'm, I'm healthy, I've not had any symptoms or issues. We don't have time to get sick. We've been working long, long hours, seven days a week. But we got to make a conscious choice not to go somewhere. And that, that's how we're going to contain the spread of this. This stay at home, safer in place is working. 
absolutely is working. Thank you, Mr. Waller. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate the update. Ms. Hankson, would you come up? Just like for you to give us an update of emergency management and also maybe if you want to discuss or speak of the storms yesterday a little bit. I'll be glad to. Um, first I'll talk about the storms because we actually have one going on right now. Al Sandrick, he's our um, meteorologist out of Jacksonville. He called me yesterday and I got to brag on him for just a second. He called and he said, Sharon, you've got a system coming in between New Bern and 90 going into Live Oak. Looks like it's going to be coming into Live Oak, possible tornadoes, and it'll end around I-10. That's exactly what it did. And unfortunately, we did have the tornado. He called me this morning and said we had a system coming in in Lauraville. He said, thankfully, it doesn't look like any tornadoes are going to come out of this one, but strong winds, 30, 40 mile per hour winds, and possible hail. So that's what's going on out there this morning. Um, and yesterday we confirmed that it was a low-grade tornado, probably an F0, about 75 mile per hour winds. So that was from yesterday. And our office continues to jump from COVID to weather, and I'm, you know, I'm about over it, but that's just the way it is, and we're gonna roll with it and keep on going. Um, with COVID, we continue to work with all the departments um, from um, Department of Health, to the hospital, to fire rescue, and um, then we're reaching out in our community to all the assisted living facilities, nursing homes, doctor's offices, um, making sure that they have everything that they need. If they do not, they continue to send us what they need through a resource request. I've been proud to say that the last, last weekend, we were the biggest supplier of PPE equipment. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. However, we did get a lot of hand sanitizer so we were able to also give that out to the departments. And if the library and Parks and Rec, I think we missed you guys, so if you'll get with me, we'll get you guys some hand sanitizer. Um, also, our EMPG, which you're going to be talking about that in just a minute, the state was gracious enough, and actually the federal government, to allow us an extension. I think that we will meet the June 30th deadline and still be able to expend our grant funds like we normally do but they're allowing that due to COVID. But um, we pretty much just continue to be on the daily calls with the state. Um, and we'll, like I said, we're working with the hospital, working with Mr. Harris for any sheltering issues. I will go ahead and tell you that they're saying that hurricane season could be a bad one. So we're already starting to begin discussions on what would sheltering look like, what would mass feeding look like. So those are things that we're already on conference calls with the state working on as well. So we can be as prepared as we can be. Thank you so much. Do I have any questions for Ms. Harris? Or not, Ms. <laughs> not Mr. Harris, but Ms. Hinkson. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for your update. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. if I could mention something real quick. Um, I know you had something on your mind as well. I said uh, yeah, I'm glad. Actually, I remembered um, Ms. Hinkson without speaking. When the uh, tornado came through and made a mess yesterday, we had debris all over the roadways and piled up next to the uh, uh, co-op out there. We're going to go ahead and take care of business because we're under a declaration uh, of emergency, which is different than what we would typically, we would typically be under one for storm season if we had a hurricane. Um, because it's in a gray area, I would like the board to consider declaring it uh, a public necessity uh, or a public purpose to go ahead and assist people in getting debris off of their facilities and help them clean up. Under a declaration of emergency or a state of emergency, we have a, the ability to do things that we can't ordinarily do. Uh, going on to pro private property, for example, uh, we can do that under a local state of emergency. And because it's unlikely that we will consider or entertain adopting a uh, declaration of emergency related to a hurricane anytime soon. And hopefully we won't have to this year. If the board would consider going ahead and just uh, agreeing by motion that it is a public purpose to go ahead and assist uh, under the state of emergency that we currently have and we have to help people clean up behind a tornado or an event like occurred yesterday. 
Do I have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion, and I'd, I'd just like to say that the work that our staff has done and, and our employees are just, they're outstanding people. I mean, they don't mess around when something like that happens, and I just want to make sure they know we appreciate that. I appreciate that, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. The second on this first. Sorry. That's fine. That just reminded me of something with what Mr. Harris said. I want to brag on the Public Works employees as well. When we were out at the first tornado a couple weeks ago, they were diligently out there working. We had two homes that were impacted by that storm, as well as somebody lost their livelihood with their um, chicken houses. And then yesterday we had an individual lose her home in the trailer park as well as about three or four other homes that were impacted so i think that's wonderful you know and public works is doing a wonderful job out there working thank, thank you thank you so much so i have a yeah i stood the motion stands yep i have a motion by commissioner Hale. second second by commissioner richardson all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed same sign motion carries at this time i'm gonna open the floor to the board for discussion or comments on the COVID issues or any other storm related issues they'd like to discuss. I said I was going to open the floor to the board. Mr. Chairman. Yes. The, the, only, thing, the only thing I'll say is, and, and I appreciate Mr. Walter giving an update, and, and um, I do hope this is the telltale week. I hope things start trending down. Uh, Sounds like you guys have a good hold on where it's at, where it's coming from, and where it seems to be going. So I appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, but but I agree. It's this. I hope this is the, the week that things really start trending in the downward numbers. So, uh, but just appreciate what you guys do. Thank you, Commissioner Hale. Mr. I don't have anything other than just our thoughts and prayers to the family members of the ones that fell victim. Do I have any uh, anyone from the public wishing to speak? Miss Betty, you look like you have something on your mind this morning. Come on up and see us. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just have a couple of questions from staff. I do have some answers, but the reason that I'm here is because I did let them know that I would be sending out a mass email and mailing um, today with regards to some answers. Um, I was not at the last board meeting, but I did see the video, um, and some of them did, and they just wanted to clarify a couple of uh, things with you. Um, I'll just go down the list. There are only about eight of them. Um, some of them I have received, I think, a permanent answer two from finance and I also got the letter that Mr. Harris wrote for them to be able to use uh, for their furlough time unemployment. But one of the questions that the staff um, asked, and this is mainly those people that are either in drop and or are going to be retiring um, soon, um, it, the answer to the drop uh, program, I think you uh, already took care of that. You said that drop would not be affected by this furlough. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And also, um, the staff wanted to know if their retirement would be affected. Um, and my understanding is that, um, and that's with regards to payment into uh, the retirement system. My understanding is that as long as they work one day of the month, uh, the retirement is paid into, and that means that April is taken care of. Um, if uh, they do not work at least one day of a particular month, uh, then that means that the retirement will not be paid into. Is that? I haven't I spoken to Mr. Gentry about that at all. I haven't okay. heard that question until now. Okay. Um, so. I think a, that also. Can we get a? Can we check into that? Yeah, maybe have a. Sure, I I can get answers for that. I just have. I'll send you a copy of the questions to him, and I, I did send him a, a copy of them. Okay. 
um, and he did address some of them. Um, and I could be wrong on this, but I think that some staff pay into their own retirement. Is that so? For that portion that they pay into the retirement, everyone, if that every, is everyone pays a small percentage, right? Small so percentage. I guess right. So I guess um, the question was more or less: How do they do that uh, since they won't be on the payroll? I'm not really sure about that. That's that's a key gentry question. Okay. Um, um, and some of my staff wants to use their leave bank. Some wants to use the complete bank. I mean, um, annually. They know that sick leave is not a part of this. Some of them want to use their whole bank, and some of them wants to use a portion of their bank. Is it okay? For them to do that. That's going to be paid out in 80 hour increments to match a pay period. Okay. Now if they start collecting unemployment okay. um, in seven days then it'll be seven days worth of that okay. that they'll be able to draw down against. Okay. What they can't do is cash out all of the, which is one of the questions, they cannot cash out lump sum everything that's in their annual leave bank. Okay. It'll track Time away from work is essentially what it's doing, just like it always did, except that they're going to be able to cash it out as they go rather than show up for any type of work or claim it as a vacation. Okay. So, Keith, give me the details on that. That's there aren't a lot of details. Um, if they, they can take it out in 80 hour increments that matches a pay period. Okay. So, it, it'll really be up to them okay. once, once they get some. Uh, confirmation that they're going to be collecting unemployment compensation, they will need to notify him to stop if they have actually applied for a, a pay period's worth, for example, okay. of cashing out that annual leave. Okay, I think that they got confused because uh, you know, on the video, I think that there was a mention that it would be paid to them or it would be included in their last paycheck that they receive um, prior to the furlough. So I'll correct well, that. They will need to ensure that, that they do not request more once they've got right. a confirmation. Okay. So it will be, for lack of better words, a last check. Okay. Otherwise, it conflicts with their application for unemployment compensation. Okay. Um, and my understanding is that part-timers are eligible for applying for unemployment. That was a question that I that's actually assumed a, that's, that's a right. state question in the unemployment office, but I, I believe that you are correct okay. from what I've read. Okay. Um, and they know the formula for calculating unemployment as it is now. And my assumption is that it's still uh, um, what's on the state's site. There are no exceptions with regards to the, okay. the $600 on top of their unemployment that was discussed. Um, they wanted to know if uh, that's something that happens with regards to their uh, unemployment application, or is there another that's process that they would need to go question state because the federal funds federal funds are being made available to the state okay. so we really are not a party to that but that's been pretty heavily covered um, okay. if you do any online research at all you'll find that that's been the case but I'm that's that going to be administered it'll be administered I, I, I believe it's going to be administered through uh, the unemployment uh, compensation administrators okay um, I think the 20th is when they will receive their last paycheck, um, but I'm assuming that it's, uh, I think that it is the 20th. Somebody asked that question. And that the pay period is Friday. Mm -hmm. Whatever that date is. I think it's yeah. that Friday. Well, is that, yeah. Um, yeah, that's when they get the check. Okay. 
if the staff elect not to lose, use their um, annual leave banks, uh, the question was, will they be there when they return to work? I assume. Their that annual, will, annual leave bank? Yes. It would still be there. Okay. Whatever balance they had, right. it would still be there. Okay. And the same would be true for their sick leave. Whatever balance they have would continue to be there. Okay. This one is uh, with regards to insurance that the staff is responsible for paying. They want to know how they would pay that. Will they be invoiced by the county or the, uh, the insurance carrier? Some of them carry insurance that they are responsible for paying the premium for. Um, Whatever method that they would traditionally pay it through is the way that they would continue to pay it. Because we're paying for their health insurance. Right, but I think that Are you talking about their money is taken out and the county pays for these barriers. Then they, would, then they would have to bring that money to the finance department. To make okay, so payments. the county can invoice them for, for that. Okay. All right. Mr. They, they, should, they should speak to Mr. James I did. Over, over I, in finance about that, but that's the way it would traditionally be handled. Okay. Uh, and Keith did say that he believes that the county would uh, invoice them, um, but I was. Uh, administration isn't going to invoice them. Now, if finance invoices them, finance would. Have, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I mean, finance. Yeah, <laughs> finance, administration. Fi finance would continue to do whatever they have historically done. Okay, except that they will bill them for it. Right. It won't I, I would out. tell those employees to communicate with finance and make sure that they receive an invoice for that payment. Okay. It's much like what we have retirees that do the same thing. They okay. maintain a certain type of insurance and they'll go in and make payments to finance as well. I would, I would just like to say I would encourage each employee, if they have any questions or concerns, to call finance. Their phone call away. They can ask them and speak with them. And I mean, a lot of these things seem like one-on-one -on -one questions that people need to understand. Right. And there's somebody there that can answer that question. Right. I, and I they, just, and they had their first um, email was um, had that information in it. Um, so I'll just verify that that's the phone number to call because they are starting to take a look at the uh, application, and of course, finance would be the place that could, I guess, answer those questions. So I'll reiterate that. I just, with them. I mean, I feel like everybody, you know, there needs to be an open line of communication and. We all have to be responsible for our own selves. I mean, we understand that, but I, I don't want people just to sit home and think everything's fine when they do have a question like this. Reach out and verify to someone. And like you're and doing, I mean, you're getting information and bringing it back to them. But I'm saying, please let these folks know to, to follow up and keep following up until they get the answer that, that they need to the question. Don't, you know, a lot of times we sit back and we don't do something that we should have done, and then we look back and say, well, Trust me, they're, they're not doing that. I haven't. <laughs> and, and I'm not insinuating that. All I'm saying is I, I want them to, to be proactive and then there not be a problem. What and not be doing. hesitant or think that they are doing something wrong by reaching out to a department, of the finance department, with these questions. So. No. Oh, absolutely. I, I just, I, and I hope this is, you know, we all hope this is a very short term thing that's very short, going to get cleared up before. Okay. Long at all. Uh, Commissioner Richardson, did you have a question? No, I was uh, simply going to say something that um, Mr. Harris, I think, covered very well. Uh, as long as, and you, you echoed exactly my sentiments, and that is, number one, we're going to make this as simple as possible. I know a lot of these companies, um, AFLAC, one of them, a lot of the supplemental carriers that, that provide the insurance that, uh, that you're probably speaking mostly about. Um, they have methods for uh, working with employees that are on temporary furloughs, as well as uh, people who have been employed. But the, uh, the, the bottom line is I think if we, at a, at, on the county level, make this as easy as possible for them, then, um, then I don't think that they have to worry about it, but they do need to ask the questions um, of the departments that, that really need to take care of. And I know they're, they're a lot more concerned about uh, jumping above the chain of command and, and going to a department. They, 
we normally would not go to. So, um, uh, I, I think that they they just basically want to know where to send the money to sure. because they're concerned that they absolutely. Just, yeah. so. Okay. Um, there was one. Uh, this is um, uh, something a little bit different in terms of state aid. Um, just want to report to you that I have received the state aid money for the libraries for this year from the state. We got a slight increase. Um, and I know that you mentioned um, state aid um, the last meeting, I think, and how that would affect uh, what's going on now. And the only way that that will affect um, what's happening right now is uh, that your local spending will go down this year and in two years out it will manifest itself in terms of how much money you get back for state aid and that's for all three counties. Um, so it just depends on, I guess, um, how much of a reduction that the county spends this year um, and then in two years um, the board will uh, and the administrator will then um, have to make decisions with regards to whether something needs to be made up or whether we have to uh, take other measures in terms of uh, cutting uh, our spending. So I just wanted to um, let you know that because I know it was brought up at the last meeting. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so it, much. Unless you have questions for me. Any questions for Thank you, Ms. Baker. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from any department heads or the public? Seeing none, we'll have closing comments at this time. Mr. Babat, do you have anything for us? No, sir, not today. Thank you, sir. Mr. Harris? Just briefly, we did get a uh, notice that the state is trying to look at forecasting revenues, um, state revenues. Uh, the obvious answer, I think, that we all could have concluded this, that they're unable to do that right now that it could be another month before they have a real feel for the impact of this pandemic. Um, in my mind, it's probably going to be more like four months. But right now, they think it's going to be at least a month before they can gauge the effects of this pandemic in the state, so far as revenues go. That's all. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Richardson. Um, I'd just like to echo what uh, Commissioner Hale uh, said, uh, that appreciate the quick response of our departments, uh, especially with these storms going through. Um, we're, I don't know what we do if this issue with the pandemic keeps going on and we get into a, an early hurricane season and have problems, but uh, I know that our departments and our employees will step up and do the work that's necessary. And, uh, and for the leadership, I, I can't say enough. You guys have, have really stepped up and filled in the space. From the sheriff's department, uh, uh, fire EMS administration, library, you've has has had to deal with a lot of uh, employee furloughs, and, and I think you guys have just done a jam up job. And I don't know what Jimmy does nowadays, but um, I know he's doing a good job doing it. So appreciate him back there, him and uh, especially Greg too back there in parks recreation. So thank you guys for all that you do and your employees. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Fleming, I would like to say the same thing. Uh, Appreciate everything that the county does, the county as a whole, with fire rescue, uh, sheriff department, uh, all the department heads, uh, public work. When there's uh, a problem, an issue, underlying issue out there, they, they're Johnny on the spot. I've uh, I've been through down through 252 numerous of times. Uh, we've been going out to our property and. When I leave here, I'm going out since she said it was out in the lower area. area. <laughs> There's nothing that I can do, but at least I can go out there and look. But as I travel around the county and I see things that's done, you know, uh, uh, tree limb, debris, stuff like that, and a quick response, that means that we have a great county, we have great staff, we have great personnel that make sure the job is done. And uh, I think with that being said, you know, we, we have to give out our flowers what they are doing, and I appreciate the quick response and uh, the accountability that's going on in this county. 
and uh, say to you, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for, for your leadership, your quality leadership. Uh, I've watched you. Uh, again, I thank you for coming back to the Coliseum. I think it's one of the greatest places to have at this point. And I know sooner or later that this thing will leave out. I said earlier that they did say that in New York it was like dying down. Uh, but you don't want to stop uh, congregating too soon to make a second outbreak, so thank you for your leadership. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your comments, Commissioner Fund. mean a lot to me. Uh, Commissioner Gamble. I don't have anything this morning. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Hale. I think everybody's pretty much said it. I'm good, thank you. Thank you so Chairman, much, gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, can I comment real quick on something? Those signs that we finally uh, had them delivered, the ones that match these things hanging on the wall right here. You're going to see those popping up all over the county. We're taking some down to Brantford. Uh, we're going to offer some to the city lab. I've got a man that's taking those, the smaller versions of those around to all of your large businesses that are still in business, offering them so they can put them near their registers and different things. Um, so they're, they're going to be out all over the community as well pretty quick. I just want to mention that in case people call you asking me because they've got a little disclaimer thing on there that says the Swanee County Commission at the bottom. You just need to know that we're getting those out now all over the place. Thank you. Just to follow up on that, I actually saw uh, the, one of the trucks this morning going out with signs on the back of the county truck. Chair, yes, sir. Just to Mr. Harris, uh, not another public meeting, but can I have one of those signs? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I did forget one thing. I, I, I think you guys have one here. I do want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Pravat for our mask Absolutely. that she made for us. I want everybody to see how good this thing looks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How much better this one looks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was mask and that was cold. No, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> just kidding. For everybody at home, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's some fun uh, old fans out there remember that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably some of my district. <laughs> I just uh, like to thank everyone for being here. I thank everyone for their hard work. Uh, like Commissioner Gamble said earlier, I just our thoughts and prayers and goes out to the families that's lost a loved one due to this virus. It's uh, heartbreaking. It shows you the how easy it is for something to change your life just that quick and I think that really speaks volumes to how serious this is and that I feel like a, most everyone has taken heed to that and you see a lot of folks staying home and doing the right thing of course we still have a few but we'll, we'll continue to work on them and pray for them that they'll heed the orders and to help keep us all safe uh, I would like to say that the audio has been great today. I apologize for my comments last week. It's, uh, the audience told me they could hear fine, and it was just us up here that couldn't, but it's been perfect today, so thank you so much for, for getting us straight on that. Uh, one other thing I run across, a lot of times in times like this, you look for something positive, and I run across a quote that uh, just kind of meant something to me. And, it says, uh, sometimes in life we're tested not to show our weaknesses, but to discover our strengths. And in this time, I just feel like that's where we're at. And we'll come out of this stronger than when we went in it. I've had uh, our mayors with us here this morning, Mr. Frank Davis from City of Live Oak. I'd like for him to come up and give us a close prayer. Would you please do that, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I want to say a few thank yous, too. Thank you all for your leadership. I really appreciate your care and concern for our county and our communities. I think you're doing a great job, and uh, your staff, and I, every time I see Cher and I say you're doing a good job because I really appreciate the good information she's getting out to us. And I did want to say, I was at the um, Swanee Health Care the other evening when they had the park and, and pray, 
and I was just uh, really busting with pride uh, at the, the show of uh, community support for the facility there and the workers. And, uh, you know, these folks, through no fault of their own, are having to go in there and work and take care of those patients. And uh, they really, uh, the, the, the uh, administration there told me there was not a dry eye in the place when they stepped out and saw the uh, police officers, the deputies, and all the community with their uh, lights blinking and the uh, sirens. So uh, again, I just really am proud of our community and, th and thankful for uh, the leadership that we have. So again, thank you. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for living in a, a great place like Swanee County. What a uh, wonderful group of people and families and businesses and leaders that we have here. Thank you for keeping your hand upon us. Lord, we know there are a number here in our county, maybe uh, per capita, that's uh, some of the highest in the state. But Lord, keep your hand upon these people that have uh, been tested positive. We pray for a speedy recovery and healing for them. And we pray especially for your protection upon those who are caring for them, all of the health care workers, uh, those first responders, the people that are on the front lines of this uh, medical a war this pandemic we thank you so much for them but we pray for them and their families that they would remain safe and strong and be encouraged and uh, for those lord who have businesses that are suffering we pray we pray for a speedy economic recovery in this great nation and uh, for those who are suffering in this part of this uh, thing we just ask you to encourage them and lift them lord our, our spirits need to be lifted uh, here in swanee county in our state and in our nation. So we pray just your divine uh, hand to be upon us, to, to lift us, to revive us, and to awaken us anew, I pray. And uh, thank you for the leaders that we have that are on the front lines that are stepping up and uh, leading us into uh, the right way. And uh, today we give you praise and honor and glory and thank you again so much for all that you do for us. In your wonderful name we pray, amen. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Commissioner Gamble. Yeah, Commissioner Gamble. Uh, second by Commissioner Fleming. All of